In this video, I wanna talk about how to create ultra photorealistic images using Midjourney. This video is actually inspired by a Reddit thread that I came across a few days ago. This person created these images inside of Midjourney. If you just take a look at these, look at how absolutely realistic these are. If you didn't look really, really close and you just saw these on Instagram, you'd probably think these were actual real photographs. Up until recently, I didn't even realize that you can get this kind of quality out of Midjourney. I wanna do some experimentation and see if we can get similar results out of Midjourney ourselves. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, this thread on Reddit was from user Archie7 and they were kind enough to actually share the prompt that they use. Now in this thread, they talk about how this was actually the original prompt that they used to get these images, but then they started to remove some of the prompt keywords and ended up getting a shorter prompt to generate similar results. And that was this prompt. And then after even more experimentation, they got it down to even this shorter prompt here. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we pull this into Midjourney ourselves. Now, before I get into it, if you don't already have a Midjourney account, pop on over to midjourney.com, come down here to join the beta, and you can actually generate up to 25 images for free inside of Midjourney. It does require that you do it in Discord. And then after 25 images, their most inexpensive plan is about 10 bucks a month. So let's go ahead and grab this prompt here. We'll go ahead and copy it and let's pull it into Midjourney ourselves and see what happens when we use the same prompt that they used in that Reddit thread. So the prompt that they ended up using was portrait of an Indian village woman in forest in Himachal Pradesh. Sorry if I butchered that. Clear facial features, cinematic 35 millimeter lens, f1.8, accent lighting, global illumination, and then they made sure up light and version four and quality two we're all set. And here's what I got when I generated that. And I mean, look at these, these are so realistic. I especially think number one and number four here are just insanely detailed. Like you probably wouldn't notice that these were generated with Midjourney if you just kind of scrolled past them on Instagram or something. Let's go ahead and upscale number one and let's go ahead and upscale number four. And look at these, these are just absolutely amazing. This was that first one that we upscaled here. And here's number four upscaled. The detail in these is just crazy to me. So let's go ahead and grab this same prompt here and let's break it down a little bit. So some of the extra prompts that they added in here were clear facial features, cinematic, 35 millimeter lens, f1.8, accent lighting and global illumination. So when you add some of the things that you might get in a real camera, you start getting some of the effects that you'd get from a real camera. So a 35 millimeter lens, that's kind of like a wider angle lens. So this shot would be like somebody getting really, really up close and personal with the person taking the picture and just really getting up on their face. And then the F 1.8 would generate what's called a shallow depth of field, meaning that the foreground, the person in the front is really in focus, but everything behind them is out of focus. And you'll notice that in all of these images here, the background is really out of focus and the person in the foreground is really in focus. That's what you get with an F 1.8 depth of field. Now the accent lighting and the global illumination, that just gives us some of the lighting that you're seeing sort of under the eyes here and the way that her own face casts shadows below her neck and things like that. The up light, that's just telling Midjourney to do a light upscale on the image. And then quality two, that's basically saying generate a higher quality image. So let's take this same prompt, but let's tweak it a little bit. Let's type imagine and we'll paste this in. And then instead of a portrait of an Indian village woman in a forest, let's do a young American boy leaning against a brick wall. Clear facial features, cinematic, 35 millimeter lens. And and let's just leave everything else the same, but just swap out an Indian village woman in a forest with a young American boy leaning against a brick wall and see what we get with that. And once again, we got some really, really detailed images. Now, in my opinion, these are a little less realistic. There's something about them that almost looks like Unreal Engine video game characters but they're still pretty dang good. Now, earlier today, as I was preparing to make this video, I actually came across this video from the Maximize YouTube channel here, where he talks about how to create AI photos that look 100% real with Midjourney. I'll make sure I link this below as well. There was one tip in this video that I came across that I thought was really, really cool. He showed that if you actually put Polaroid in part of your prompt, it generates what you would traditionally think of as a Polaroid image and give you these ultra 
realistic images on a Polaroid. So this was something else I wanted to check out and test for myself as well. So let's jump back into Mid Journey here and let's do imagine a photograph of two girls celebrating at a birthday party and then let's add Polaroid. And this is essentially the same prompt he was using in this video. I just want to test to see if I get a similar result here. I'm not going to change the aspect ratio because a Polaroid is traditionally a square image. And look at these. These are so realistic. I mean, if you look really close, you could see some stuff that are dead giveaways that it's AI. I mean, who wears two party hats like that? I guess it kid's birthday party you might wear two party hats like that honestly but they even made it so that the images look a little bit aged so really really cool effect now let's go ahead and try this with a different prompt and see if it works outside of the original prompt we gave it let's go imagine a photograph of a dad in the 1970s leaning against his corvette that seems like something you might have a polaroid of and check that out that looks like every dad from the 1970s leaning against his corvette every dad that you know tucks his arm into his jean shirt or has his arms melt into his hands all right so there's some perspective issues here but you know with a couple re-rolls i'm sure we could get some really cool images of exactly what we're looking for now we already know that mid journey can do ultra realistic landscape photography but using some of these camera details can really really up level it so let's do imagine a landscape photograph of snow covered mountains behind a beautiful lake. Let's add some details about the camera we're using. Let's use a 35 millimeter lens, f22 for the aperture, cinematic, and let's go wide angle lens. And then let's go ahead and add our aspect ratio of 16.9. And let's see what this generates for us. All right, so look at those. Now, if I sent you one of these photos and said, I just took this on my recent trip to New Zealand, you probably wouldn't question the authenticity of any of these. These are really realistic. Now, another really cool technique I wanted to share was one I came across from my friend Linus here. He shared his technique for National Geographic photography with Mid Journey. And look at how realistic these lions are here. Look at how realistic this monkey is and this cheetah and these zebras. I mean, this imagery looks like something that a National Geographic photographer would have actually taken. And he, of course, shares his prompt up here. So here's his formula. You put the animal, the shot direction, the pose, the time of day, you add National Geographic, and then your film type. So for example, lions from below, side view, golden hour, National Geographic, shot on Agfa Vista, aspect ratio 16.9. Let's go ahead and test this prompt here. Pull it into mid journey, paste in the exact prompt that Linus shared. Look at these. These are all super realistic. I mean, it's just crazy to me what you can do with Mid Journey right now. Let's go ahead and grab this same prompt, but let's change out some of the keywords. So I'll go ahead and copy this. We'll paste it back in here. This time, let's do penguins. Let's leave everything else from below. Side view, golden hour, National Geographic. But then let's put shot with telephoto lens. Leave our aspect ratio at 16.9. And let's see what that gives us. And once again, absolutely awesome. Some funkiness going on in this one up here. But I mean, like this one right here, I don't think you would second guess if you saw this on the cover of a National Geographic. Same with this one up here. I think a lot of the magic in this one is in that golden hour prompt there that gives it that sort of gold overlay look. And then of course, using National Geographic to get that National Geographic photo style. Let's try something else here. I'm gonna copy this same prompt, but let's tweak it again. I'll paste it in. Let's do a hippo. Let's change this to from above. Let's change this to morning hour and leave shot with a telephoto lens here. Adding the time of day and National Geographic and the type of lens that you're using, mwah, that's, that's really what gives these the power. And these just look awesome. This this one down here is a little janky, but these other three all look just great. I mean, you can see that they look like somebody was maybe standing up on a hillside taking a shot down at a hippo. And, you know, we're not getting that same golden look like we did on the golden hour. We're getting kind of a more blue sort of cooler toned image. So just absolutely amazing stuff. And you can just really get some crazy photo realism with mid journey right now. Now there's one last thing I want to try. I want to try to use a combo of Linus's technique with some of the earlier techniques that we were messing with and see if we can get photos of people to look equally as realistic again. So let's go ahead and type imagine, but instead of hippo, let's do a young boy 
on a street corner graffiti wall background let's do from above side view morning hour national geographic let's go back to the shot on agfa vista let's go ahead and put our aspect ratio at 16 9 and let's see if we blend the sort of national geographic and the time of day with an actual human i wonder what that's going to give us not too bad at all especially this top right where their back is kind of facing us this looks like it could be a real image this one you could kind of tell by the face and the hands that it's not that realistic the wall itself looks ultra realistic this one i think looks kind of too much like a cartoon face and this one i don't know there's something off about it but this one on the top right really really cool image anyway it just really blows me away what you can do with mid journey right now you can get some really crazy amazing realistic images out of it now i'll be sure to link all of these resources up below go check out archie 7's thread here on reddit about how they got these super realistic images out of mid journey check out linus's thread about how he's using the national geographic prompt to get these crazy realistic animal images check out maximizes youtube channel where he shares his formula for how he's getting realistic images with mid journey a lot of really cool stuff out there and i'm just loving playing around with this stuff and figuring out how to get more and more realism out of mid journey have you found any prompts that work really really well share them in the comments i want to test some more and make more videos about just amazing mid journey prompts and if you love nerding out about all this ai stuff as much as i do make sure you check out futuretools.io this is the site where i curate all of the cool ai tools that i come across i'm adding new tools every single day and if it's just a little bit too much for you and it's a little overwhelming click here to join the free newsletter every single friday i send just the five coolest ai tools that i come across i also send a handful of youtube videos a handful of news articles basically the tldr of all the coolest stuff that happened in the ai space over the week you can find it all over at futuretools.io thanks so much for hanging out with me today i hope you enjoyed this video i enjoyed making it i love exploring mid journey and i'm going to keep on going deeper and testing the limits of what it's capable of make sure you like this video press the little thumbs up button and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel it'll make sure you see more videos just like it in your feed thanks so much for tuning in see you guys in the next one bye